Hey everybody, it is 1201. Um, this is my first book club that I'm hosting and we're gonna be talking about The Intentional Year, which was the book to read for July. Um, if you weren't able to make it live for this, this will just replay when I'm done. And so you can watch it again when it's done if you need to watch it later. Um, and if you haven't printed these out, that's fine too. You can always watch the replay and fill them out or just take notes in the notebook but I put these in the files, the three freebies that go with the book. And I'm going to, um, after I kind of say hi and see who's in here and get everybody going, then we'll go through the worksheets together. So if you need a second to print those, um, we've got about three minutes before I'm gonna get started. Um, otherwise you can just rewatch this and fill it out or, um, what was I gonna say? Use a piece of paper or a notebook is fine as well. So grab your worksheets or something to write with, grab something to drink. I've gone through too many coffees, so I got some water. Um, grab a snack. We're gonna do this about 20, 30 minutes, I guess, to go over these sheets. Um, and then also, if you've got your copy of The Intentional Year, you might wanna to refer to that. So to get started, Let's uh, introduce yourself in the comment and let us know where you're from. I am from Texas, uh, northern Texas right now, and it's a thousand degrees outside, so let me know where you're from in the comments. Lynn, Lida Adams, I'm not sure how you say that, but hi Lida. Stephanie Snyder is here and Barbara Manny. Hi girls, glad you're here. We'll wait just a little bit for more people to get in here. And I know not all of you probably got to finish the book. I'm guilty of that in my own book clubs. But if you have finished it, um, what do you think of it? Or if even if you're halfway through, anybody have any thoughts what they thought of the book? I did see that some people had posted they were like, highlighting all over their book and taking all kinds of notes as they were going through it. And that was me for sure. That's why I made printables for this because I was like, oh man, this is getting a lot of ideas going. Okay, it is 12.03, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the worksheets. And just as you um, join, hi, Stephanie, tuning in from West Virginia, not quite as hot as Texas, but it's inappropriately hot here today, yes. I'm originally from Northern Virginia. Um, outside of Fairfax and so I am missing the summers out there when it's like 95 is the max over here it's like 110 average not cool so uh, thank you girls you can just comment as you um, want to and I'll check on those as I can I'm gonna turn the camera to face the worksheets and we're gonna start with the goal ideas first so let me turn this Okay. All right. Thumbs up or comment if you guys can see this. And the camera's shaking just because I've got a wobbly thing that it's on. It'll stop in a minute. <laughs> You guys see this? Mary is watching from Cool Panguitch. I don't know how to say that. In the Utah mountains. Lucky! Our neighbors just got back from the mountains. And they're going to the beach. I am so jealous right now. They said it was like 50 degrees the other day. Okay, cool. Mary says yes, she could see it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the intentional year... Um, talks about finding rhythms for finding um, just intentionality in your day-to-day -day. and you don't have to start this in January you can start this any time of the year um, which is summertime is a great time to hit reset or right before the school year uh, because we've got the academic calendar um, just kind of changes things up um, I know the summer my schedule looks totally different than the school year with the kids and so I have to create a different 
thing or your resolutions from the new year never got done or you've met them or you need to tweak because life is just different than it looked then. So now's a great time to do that. So there are five areas of intentional living for in the intentional yearbook and that's prayer, rest, renewal, relationships, which is covers a ton. So I made a huge block for that and then work. And even if you're a work, a stay at home mom, you count this as your work. Or if you've got volunteer work, that counts as work. Work doesn't, you don't have to be paid for it to be counting as work. And we'll talk about that at the end. So let's start with um, what area are you like drawn to right now for coming up with some goals for your life? Maybe um, you're excited about renewal and what that means or you read something in the book about relationships and you've like highlighted everything there, write one of those five, or in the comments, one of those five areas that uh, resonate with you that you want to set some goals for. Anyone? Bueller? Okay, well, I'll get started with prayer. Um, I would love to improve my prayer life, and I've done a couple things since I've read this book to improve my prayer life. So I what I'm going to do here is just brain dump. Oh, prayer. Katrina's got that as well. I'm going to brain dump some ideas from the book, some ideas from my life of ways I could be more intentional and implementing prayer into my life. So you write down when I write it and you're like, yes, that sounds good. Then you write that one. If it doesn't um, sound like something you're interested in, don't write it down. So I'm just gonna give you a bunch of ideas. Or if you have an idea I don't mention, put it in the comments or write it on your paper. But here's just a brain dump of some ideas you can do for prayer goal ideas. Uh, breath prayers is kind of a new concept. It's like meditation when you breathe in a phrase and you breathe out another phrase. And that helps a lot with anxiety or um, just trying to stay focused. And it could be as simple as Jesus and you breathe in as you say that thought in your head or you say it and you breathe out, give me peace if you're wanting peace. And so it's like a breathe in, breathe out. And uh, there's a ton of different ones. I'm actually, our next book is going to discuss this at length, um, but it will cover more than just breath prayers. But breath prayers has been really awesome. Okay, pray is a new concept they mentioned in the book. It's just kind of a formula for your prayer life. So when you're praying, you're gonna pause. You're going to rejoice then ask, and then yield. So you're going to look in the book for more details, but pause, acknowledge who God is, praise him for who he is, rejoice in it, ask for what you need, and then yield, kind of step back and pass that on to him and trust in him. Uh, there's also prayer journals, which I've been prayer journaling every morning for a long time, so this one really resonates with me. And then recently I discovered liturgy books. They're just basically like creating your own psalms um, in a collection over topics that people write. Um, and so looking into different collections of liturgies is a really good idea for prayers. And then the prayer, these are ancient prayers, prayer of examine. And Lectio Divinia which actually there's an app for this one someone mentioned and I checked it out. Um, the prayer of examine and Lectio Divinia is our old template prayers that you can um, just pray those prayers and you just have to Google those. Um, but those are some different ones. The Psalms as prayers, yes, I do those as well. So um, let's move on to rest. And rest we're just gonna touch on real briefly because I'm actually going to go over how to do uh, create your own Sabbath with another worksheet. So rest, you can talk about maybe you setting a goal of being more intentional in the Sabbath. Um, that could be like 
right now a lot of people think, okay, what I go to church on Sunday, I do acknowledge the Sabbath, but this is more of a being very intentional about a 24 hour period where you are solely focused on Sabbath rest. And I'll go through those details in a little bit. The other thing I've been doing that I love since COVID is going on a personal retreat where I basically take 24 hours, get a hotel room to myself, and I just kind of take a minute to catch my breath and breathe. And sometimes I've done it because I've been really anxious in an anxious season and I just need no responsibility for a minute. Um, and so I'll set that up a month ahead of time. Look, with my husband, I need time to myself and I need some stuff off my plate. And so I'll either go and work on some stuff to get caught up or I will do nothing and veg out and treat myself and walk around and pray. Um, taking that personal retreat twice a year has been phenomenal if you can figure out a way to do that. Or maybe you take a time with some girlfriends um, or if a family vacation is restful for you, but it is not very restful for me. It's fun, but I wouldn't define a family vacation as restful. Um, but also taking time off work. So making sure that you set those boundaries of when you're working and when you're resting. Um, let's go to renewal. There's five areas of renewal and you don't have to write all this down. I'm just kind of brain dumping everything. You just write what sticks out to you personally. Um, five areas the book mentioned that you can work on renewal, such as physical exercise. And I've got some examples. Oh, like if you have a goal to lose a certain amount of weight or you just aren't active and you want to get, you know, the, your steps in or um, if you love doing um, running or whatever it is, getting physically active, uh, working on nutrition. I'm actually doing a 40 day sugar fast right now, which is not hardcore sugar fast like fruits and stuff, but I'm talking about like stop having desserts after every meal and, and raiding the fridge for Cokes and things like that. Uh, I have had some mess ups that you'll see over on my Instagram stories. I'm kind of tracking how that's going, but my daughter's can, uh, encouraging me to keep up with that. So you might have some nutrition things you want to work on, um, mental activities, such as maybe you're in a season where you're like, I could really use a counselor or I would love to do something that I just enjoy. Um, or you need to have more mindful activities in your life where you just kind of sit and pause or you get outside more. Um, habits to stop is number four. So one through three are a lot of things you might want to add to your schedule or prioritize. What in your life is something you need to stop? Like being critical of others or mindless scrolling, or one that really helped me was to physically remove my phone from my room. So at night, I never bring my phone to my room anymore. Um, if I do, I immediately recognize, oh, I need to bring it out. So I've got I've gotten the habit of that. And that's been really awesome. I don't really set time limits on my phone, but I know that once I'm shutting the house down for bed and I'm telling the kids goodnight, I put my phone to bed in my office and I let it charge in there because most of the time I would get in bed and be like, what are we going to do? Are we going to read books? We're going to watch a show with my husband. And then we'd end up just scrolling our phones for like an hour. And it's like, what? wait, why do, we, why do we do that? Or we'll, I'll wake up and the first thing I want to do is like get up and enjoy the quiet of the morning and get my coffee and read my Bible, but my phone's right there. So I'll wake up and check everything. And it was just such a bad routine of shutting down my day and waking up in the morning. So just the simple fact of setting my phone in my office and putting it to bed. And then that has changed a lot. <laughs> and just uh, my contentment in my um, things I want to get done. It's freed up a bunch of time. Play and recreation is number five. Um, and that's kind of with the hobbies and mental activities. But if you love to go on a bike ride or you want to take art classes 
or you want to go on picnics with your family, whatever it is that you would like to do for play and recreation. So any of those areas. Let's move on to relationships. There's three areas of relationships. If you're not married or you don't have kids, you don't have to write those, but marriage, kids, or if your kids are grown adults and you might have a totally different group of goals than I do. I've got an eight and a 12 year old. So right now for my marriage, I like to prioritize date nights one to two times a month. Um, that's just really something my fam my parents modeled for us and uh, growing up and I love when I get to do that with my husband it helps us connect. Um, and then overnights, we get grandpa to watch the kids or grandma one to two times a year, like one 24 hour night that we just, you know, can stay up as late as we want. We can get room service at a hotel or the kids go to grandpa's and we just get the house to ourselves. It just gives us time to connect. That's really nice. Um, learning about love languages has been really helpful. If you don't know about love languages, the book by Gary Chapman or the website, I think it's 5lovelanguages.com. Um, going to a conference, if your church offers a marriage conference, uh, those are great. Kids, I like reading books in bed at night. Read in bed together, because I kind of get to catch up on the day. Um, dates with the kids, my father, our daddy daughter dance, and then um, my daughter and I like to have, uh, what do we call it? Ladies nights, which she has nicknamed now as Woman's Day instead of Ladies Nights, and she thinks it's hilarious. She's eight. And so we've kind of got these things that we're bonding on, these little traditions of Woman's Day and daddy daughter dates and things like that. Or my son, we'll have like, he loves going to the movies. So we'll put on the calendar, this is when a movie is coming out and like have a countdown to it. Um, let's see what else. Volunteering in your youth group to get more involved with your church or having your own family Bible study. Bible study. Okay, let's see, friends, 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 friends. There was a huge section about friends in the book, which I really liked. She had talked about there are friendships where you need to lean in, let lie, and let go. The lean in friends, basically make a huge list. Make a huge list of friends you have, like you're already friends with them, you've disconnected with this friend, you want to reconnect with them, or people you admire that you'd love to be better friends with, just make a list of every person you could think of. And it can be like women in your family, um, at your church, at your school, if you take classes or your kids are friends with other parents, like list all the people in your life that you think, I would love to connect with them, or they are already connected in my life, or this person is in my life too much, Right, a brain dump of all those people. And then she talked about leaning in, let lie, and let go list. Leaning in means like, all right, now put who are the people on that list that you want to lean into, that you want, that are your mentors you'd love to know better, or friends that are just really good people you don't get together with enough that you want to add to that list and try to just invest more in that relationship. Who's that you want to let lie? These are more like acquaintances. <laughs> acquaintances or um you know you've kind of got where they don't know every intimate detail of your life and you don't really feel like they have need the access to that yet because you're not that close but you enjoy their friendship you just don't really click very well so you might just kind of leave it where you just catch up with them every once in a while a couple times a year just to check in um, but they're not the people that you want to invest all of your um, time into growing those friendships and then she also asked you to think about people in your life you might need to let go and these are um, people that maybe you need to set boundaries with or that are toxic for your family now this isn't about judging people and cutting people out of your life um, it's more about just kind of sitting back and looking at who do you spend time with who do you enjoy spending time with? Who's a good influence on your family? Who would you want your kids around? 
Um, who are the people you might need to set boundaries on? Like we'll hang out with them, but our kids shouldn't be there. Or this person needs to be more of like a once a month rather than once a week. Um, so just kind of being more intentional in those friendships. Um, and really this is what spoke to me more in this section of the book was who are the people I need to lean into more. I feel like being introverted and being a homebody, I can be really content with not being around people, but then things like COVID happen and all of a sudden it's like a panic attack where I'm like, we've been out of the loop so long, I haven't connected with anybody in a long time and I'm feeling lonely. So it's like you need that balance of what is good for you because God has also called us not to do life alone. So what in this friends list you might even circle the part that is really sticking out to you want to focus on. Maybe you've got a really toxic friendship you need to have some hard conversations with, or you need to figure out who your mentors are and reach out to them for coffee. All right, moving on to the last section is finances for, uh, I mean, sorry, not finances, is work. And that's where you can kind of address like finance goals, um, how you're gonna make room for tithing if you even are giving to charities or other um, groups that you want to give money to, like how you're gonna budget for that. You might need to work on those goals. Um, also, maybe you working on like what you're calling or purpose is, you're trying to figure out what do you wanna do next? Do you wanna stay where you are? Do you wanna move on? Um, and the book also talked a lot about purpose, whoop, purpose, how do you spell? Versus provision. So like even myself in this kind of business, like this whole business that I created started out with a purpose. I was really feeling lonely and depressed with the illness that I was having. I felt really secluded. I was supposed to be going back to work and I was physically not able to work anymore. And so I kind of just thought like, what's my purpose? And I just felt this deep need to connect with other people and encourage other people. And so I created my blog and I started reaching out to people and we started communicating more. And then I just shared kind of what my hobbies were and designing things and book uh, Bibles, study materials that I had created. And people were like, I would pay for this and you should do something with this. And maybe you should outline the Bible instead of just random um, pages. You should like go Genesis to Revelation. And so through all that, it turned into this business. And so sometimes I get in that battle of like chasing the money side of the business versus remembering the purpose behind the business. And of course, you've kind of got that, everybody kind of deals with that in some sense of trusting God with your finances and his leading. And so when you're thinking about your calling and your purpose, reminding yourself that the reason you start things is for the purpose. And if you're not um, staying focused on that anymore, or you feel like this isn't what God has for you to, um, Kind of adjust your goals in that and see if you're for focusing on the purpose versus the provision okay so i know i just said a whole lot real fast does anybody have any comments before we move on to the sabbath worksheet Okay, let's move on. Goal ideas to the side. Oh, season plans. Um, oh, we can do this season plans next. Let's look at the season plans. This one's gonna go way quicker. And it is talking about, so you've got all these goal ideas and I don't want you to, and the book also says not to, like write all this, dump all this, and then be like, all right, we're starting, here we go. You've got to take one goal from each section and work at that um, once a month. So I'm not. I'm gonna pick one prayer goal and I'm gonna work on it for a whole month before I add another prayer goal. So if you're trying to add all these goals, you're not gonna do it. You're gonna to be too overwhelmed and you're gonna fail. So make sure you're picking one from each section, working on it for the month of. August as you get good at that then pick 
a second one from each section for the month of September to build on it. Um, and if you haven't gotten there, give it more time. Otherwise, you want to you want to be successful in this. So let's move on to season plans. And the reason that we're filling this out is to kind of think of when are some times that maybe prayer is a really good time to focus on, or when is rest a really good time uh, season for it to focus on. So when you go through the spring uh, or all the different seasons, we've got in the winter time, we've got Christmas, you've got Advent, Oh, the handouts, you can access the handouts in the files in the Facebook group. Um, and also you can go back and watch this video after you're done if you don't have them and you're just jotting these down on a piece of paper. But they're in, in the Facebook group in the files tab. Winter's also got, um, oh, I'm sorry, spring. Let's see. Go, well, February kind of has a season of Lent, which I guess is going into spring. We've got Easter in the summer months. We've got Pentecost, which is really the end of May. Um, what else do we have? Thanksgiving, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, Advent, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, a new year. So here's different times. Just kind of jot anything down you can think of that's going on during these seasons. And then um, might be a good time to do one of these goals. So, for example, during Lent, um, which you don't have to be Catholic to do Lent, uh, just try to find maybe that's a good time to fast. So you might be working on nutrition or you might be working on uh, prayer. Nutrition and prayer. Um, Easter is a good time for, um, oh, what was I going to say on this one? <laughs> I can't remember. Relationships, maybe? Easter is a good time for relationships to visit extended family, invite friends to the service at your church. Summertime is a good time for um, maybe for Pentecost, you want a personal retreat. Maybe that's a good time for that. And then um, a good time to take a vacation for rest. Um, Thanksgiving is a good time for gratitude. So those renewal mental activities. Um, it's a good time for play. Uh, winter, Christmas is a good time for play as well. So you just kind of take these goal ideas and see if you can kind of stick them in a spot in the year when it would be more ideal for you to do that or start that um, goal. And so kind of brain dump that over here will help you kind of organize your year how you want to plan it out. Okay, so anybody need more time on this page before I move on to the last one? Okay, and the last one is, I'm gonna take these notes for from the book. Let me grab my notes. I loved her concept of Sabbath, and um, basically what she was saying was, a lot of us, you know, commit our Sabbath to, we always have gone to church on Sundays as, you know, I'm raising my kids, I'm gonna just have them go to church on Sundays. And maybe the only way you acknowledge the Sabbath is you don't go to, you know, sports practice skip, doesn't skip church or things like that. Um, you prioritize that. And while those are great, they are great. Um, she's talking about challenging yourself to make your Sabbath even more intentional. Um, and talking about how you don't have to have a Sabbath rest on the Sunday morning church day, but trying to find like a period of time that your family consistently can connect and get rest and focus on the Lord, uh, whether that is your Saturday 
or it's like Thursday after school and work until Friday morning. Um, but read the book for her section on Sabbath. I loved it. Just all the ideas and the good reasons to do this and um, that you should make it your own. But the focus is rest and glorifying God. So um, one thing she talked about that I hadn't really thought about was to make this work, you'd, you're would you going to have to do some prep work. So if you don't want cooking on your Sabbath, then you might need to prep meals. So you might need a meal plan. And it could be that part of your Sabbath is you want to cook together. You think that would be a really fun family activity to bond you. And so you meal plan this amazing meal, buy all the things, and on the Sabbath you cook this wonderful breakfast together or this fancy um, feast that you're going to have. Um, for me, that sounds like torture to cook on my Sabbath. So <laughs> I would be meal planning maybe making it ahead of time so that we can like throw a casserole in the oven and that's pretty much all we do is heat up some rolls and have a casserole. So either um, buy the ingredients or um, prepare the ingredients. So if you're going to have your Sabbath on a Saturday, then you could prep Friday night for this after work or whatever night you pick. Um, and also, let's see, I love how she said some restful spiritual activities are going to be, um, oh, the other thing, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Prep work is meal plan. Maybe you need to, um, clean the house. So if you're going to be tempted to be cleaning the house on your Sabbath, you might have like a chore schedule throughout the week so that on Saturday, everybody gets a day of rest and there is no cleaning on that day. And then the other thing is out of office prep. Since my work is remote and I can access it on my phone anytime I want, I do have to set boundaries for myself and schedule things out during the week so that I'm not working on the weekends and things are still going out. So whatever that looks like in your life, your out of office prep, and then your restful and spiritual activities that you could um, add is maybe, uh, I loved her idea of lighting a candle, light a candle to start. So she said when they start, they light a candle on the dining room table and the whole time that candle is lit represents it's Sabbath time. This is our intentional time together. And I love just that symbol of the reminder of this is our quiet, restful, family, glorifying God time. Um, so you might light a candle. Um, let's see. You might do a family devotional. You might just sing together. You might read the Bible together. You might pray together. Um, you might have some solitude, some time to journal. You might get out in nature, have a picnic, play, go on a walk. Um, you might have a family game. That might be your family game night. Um, and then things that you might want to stop doing for that day, that 24 hours or whatever you pick. They had ideas for no housework. And these aren't hard, fast rules. These are ideas. No housework, no cooking, no schoolwork. My kids are going to love that one. No working. I don't mind the idea of my kids earning video games for the weekend. I don't like them to play it during the school week. And I usually let them play on the weekend. If they finished all their homework and they weren't like in trouble that week or whatever. So you might even have that you do have a designated technology. Like we have one hour of technology to celebrate, you know, the hard work we did this week. So I'm not saying no technology on Sabbath. You just do whatever works for your family. Or maybe you want to end the night with like movie and a popcorn. So technology, that's totally your um, 
set some boundaries or guidelines for it if you want to include it. And then maybe no shopping or spending. So here's some good ideas. Um, if you have any other ideas, put them in the comments for things you could do or things you could stop doing. But remember that your purpose is how to glorify God and rest. So you want to throw things in there that you are doing that glorify God as well as resting. So if you're doing a family puzzle, that counts as Sabbath rest. If you're doing a family devotional, that counts as Sabbath rest. If you're taking a nap, that counts as Sabbath rest. All these things are glorifying God in resting and following his commandment. Um, let's see. So optimal schedule. Let's see. Um, it, this is just whatever you want it to be. So maybe as you're thinking about this, or write out what your schedule looks like. Like no-goes are going to be... Um, let's see, we've got something Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we could do Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, if we did Friday, it could only be a couple hours. So you might write what those hours are. Or you could even do like Friday night at 6 o'clock to Saturday at 6 o'clock p.m. So maybe Saturday after 6, your Sabbath is over. Or you could just wake up all day Saturday and Sunday when you wake up it's not Sabbath anymore like you end your Sabbath or you end your Sabbath with church so maybe it's like 12 o'clock on Saturday 12 o'clock p.m. on Saturday to 12 o'clock p.m. on Sunday I love doing church on Sunday mornings but usually my Saturday is kind of everybody relax and veg out day um, and our Sunday after church is when I do, you know, grocery shopping and I get the house clean. I get my work schedule set up. So I kind of prep for the week on Sunday. So I don't necessarily want to use my Sunday for the Sabbath, but I would love to continue my Saturday and even starting it later in the day. Like you prep Saturday from 8 to 12 and then Sabbath starts from 12 to 12. Saturday, Sunday. So that is kind of where I'm thinking on mine is going to work the best because Saturday night would be a really fun celebration as a family and then end our Sabbath with church in the morning. But you figure, figure out whatever would work for your family. The important thing is that we kind of go back and reflect on what the Bible says about Sabbath. And I really encourage you in your plans to do to do some of the stuff that's in the book and they reference Bible verses. Uh, I have a blog post on Sabbath rest. I can um, add to this and then just do a concordance search in the back of your Bible for Sabbath and rest and see what the Bible says about it. And those will give you some ideas on what God's calling you to use that time with. Um, I think that's kind of all I have. That's a good 40 minutes. Wow. I talked for a long time. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this with me. I hope it was helpful. I do want to let you know that next month we're going to be reading. At the end of the month, we'll be talking about the book Breathe. And I'll leave the link for that if you want to grab it. Um, I go late Saturday service and spend resting and Bible study on Sunday at a nap. That's awesome. That's perfect. Our church does not have a Saturday service. We used to before COVID, but that's great too. Um, love it. I'd love for you guys to keep sharing these comments even after I get off the video. But I want to just let you know real quick, grab the book, Breathe. I'll leave the notes in the comment. Uh, this is kind of building on what we just talked about, but it's all new stuff. You're going to love it. It talks about the breath prayers. It's just such a, no pun intended, breath of fresh air. <laughs> and then I like went nuts on these printables. I wrote so much stuff in here. There's four areas they address, and I wrote, there's a whole quiz that you take. You're going to love it. And I can't wait to share those worksheets with you for free next time. If you have any questions, let me put this around. If you have any questions, shoot me an, um, a message or 
put it in the comments and I'd be happy to address that for you. Uh, I know I said I'll leave a lot of links to a lot of different things, so I hope I get them all. If I forgot one, let me know. Um, grab the worksheets in the files, and I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend. And yeah, thank you so much for being here. Bye, guys. <laughs>